What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Remember, Test Audiobooks is on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Test.com, and Lee Test. So please follow me on those uh, platforms. Uh, today, we're doing a quick re recap of the games from round seven at the Super Bet Chess Tournament. Three decisive games today. And uh, first game we are going to look at is the game between Richard Report, who's had a tough tournament. With the white pieces and uh, Maxime Vachir Lagrave with the black pieces. This position arises after move 27, rook e5 from report. And uh, this position is uh, uh, equal here. Uh, if you want, we could say black may have a slight advantage, right? His pawns on the queen side uh, are a little more dangerous, okay, than the uh, white pawns on the king side. However, white has a beautiful uh, knight outpost on e6, but black has the bishop pair. So there are some factors uh, that we can say are positive for both sides. But uh, I would assess the position as uh, equal. Here, uh, Maxime then played knight d7, attacking the rook on e1. And uh, report... Uh, with his fantastic imagination and uh, calculating abilities uh, got a little bit carried away here and he played this move knight d5 and after knight takes e5 was forced to resign immediately and the reason is is because he just loses a rook um, I'm sorry he just loses a piece now why did um, report play that move I'm thinking that he uh, just did not remember that the bishop on uh, a5 was guarding the d8 square. And so here's probably what he was looking at. So knight takes e5, knight takes e7, check. Rook takes e7, and rook d8. Remember, the a5 bishop is there guarding the d8 square. But if king f7, then rook f8 checkmate and so when report played knight takes e5 i think he just failed to remember that the bishop was there guarding uh the d8 square so instead of knight d5 question mark just simply rook e e1 maybe bishop f3 rook c1 and the game uh goes on but easy, easy money, as they say, for MVL. And uh, just another disappointing day at the office for Richard Rapport. So let's look at our next game. Our next position arises from the game uh, between Ali uh, Reza Faruja and Linear Dominguez with the black pieces. In this position, black uh, has a, a slight advantage here. From this position arising from a, a Nimzo Indian, uh, Black has pushed his pawn majority on the queen side, and as you, and as you can see, has created a pass pawn on the uh, C file here. Now, um, however, uh, White has some um, attacking possibilities on the king side. As you can see, the uh, rook on H1 is dangerously placed uh, for Black on the H file, as the H file is open. The queen is on f4, and the knight on g3 is very dangerous in some variations also, as it can hop into f5 or uh, h5. So black has to be careful, all right? And basically, uh, what black wants to do is just be careful not to uh, get mated along the h-file or uh, succumb to some uh, uh, tactical uh, melee on the king side. If black can just consolidate, black has a bright future as this past pawn on the c file um uh it's probably going to be decisive at some point so here uh it's black to move ali reza has just played the move queen f4 here and um dominguez plays the move knight c6 all right and it looks like a decent move uh in spite of the fact that the knight is just hanging at this point it really um you know, attacks against the knight really would prove uh, fruitless. 
and also it um, it uh, removes the obstruction from the rook on the e file. So it looks, you know, like a, a, a great idea, right? The e pawn is weak on e3, and you can see perhaps at some future point black attacking that uh, backward uh, e pawn there. So after knight c6, though. Ali Razor uncorked the move Rook to H7. Very strong move. And the idea is that if um the idea is that if white um I'm sorry, the idea if, if is if black captures this rook, then queen takes h7, and then you have this idea of this rook that's on um d1 transferring over to the h file. And uh, basically just winning. There's no uh, stopping that threat, right? You had to play queen b1 or <laughs> something like that and just lose material. And this is a common theme that you, you uh, will see. And this is uh, what why I mentioned the danger of the white pieces on the king side. So what Lanier should have played in this position Instead of knight c6 to prevent that combination or that idea rather is just play rook a8. Alright? The reason is is because now if rook h7 then just rook a1 and you kill the idea, right? The other rook on d1 can no longer slide to uh, h1 because it would just be captured. And then after say like rook takes a1, queen takes a1, the rook would come back to h1 and maybe the black queen goes to a3 and then uh, with some more pieces traded off Black's um, uh, Superiority on the queen side Becomes more apparent Instead After knight c6 Rook h7 Of course Dominguez did not take And he plays rook e6 And he's guarding the um, He's guarding the The, uh, the, the f6 um, square Queen h4 now With the same idea Rook takes so Dominguez has to play this move knight d7. He really can't afford to play uh, anything else um, at this point. Like if he plays f5, other rook will swing over. Let's say queen b7. And the threat here uh, at this point is just rook takes g7. And this is why queen b7 would have to be played. There goes the knight sacrifice as predicted. And then... White would just uh, be mating soon after f5. So knight takes d4, rook takes g7, king takes g7, and now queen takes d4. The idea between behind queen uh, b2 for black is to get the bishop on the uh, long diagonal there. So for example here, let's say queen h6, king g8, Rook h1, then after knight takes e2, you can see that the black queen is protecting the h8 square so that white cannot use it. So this is why the razor just uh, exchanged, went into the ending, and now he's just a, a piece up here. And he went on uh, to win this game in a few more moves as black could not. Uh, ward off the uh, threats So for instance right here after knight d4 The idea for white is just f4 here king f6 and e4 and Again, you can see the threat of e5 winning the rook and if black is to exchange here on e4 then knight takes e4 the fork so that extra piece is um, Decisive here rook d7 Rook g5 check, king f6, f4. Rook take d5 could have been played, but it gives uh, black a little bit more time to survive in the position. f4, rook g d8. And a few more moves were made as Ali Razor optimizes his pieces again, threatening the fork here. I mean, those knights are just deadly. d8. Again, threatening the fork. Now threatening to win the d pawn outright. 
F4, I'm sorry, F5, Rook B2 check. Of course, idea here, knight takes, knight takes D5. Rook B2 check, King F3, Rook D2. Finally, the pawn falls. And after C3, just knight E6 and um, Dominguez had uh, enough. So Dominguez played a great game in round six. Um, and he was playing a great game here. Like I said, he was a little better. But it just goes to show you that at this level, you really, you can't really make any mistakes. I mean, he made this like one mistake here at, at move uh, 35. I'm sure time pressure was kicking in. And, uh, you know, just one, one powerful blow by Ali Reza. And another thing point that I just want to mention too is when you have opposite um, wing attacks where one player is attacking on the queen side and one t player is uh, attacking on the king side the king side attack is always going to be more important since the game ends in checkmate I mean you can have pass pawns on the other side of the board you can have uh, um, you know more material etc but if you can checkmate the opponent's king that trumps all other uh, advantages in chess. And that's what is so uh, intriguing about these opposite wing attacks. Although black was better, black made one error and that just turned the whole position around due to the activity of uh, white's pieces on the king side. So let's look at our final game to conclude this recap of round seven. This game is uh, between uh, Ian Nipomniachtchi with the white pieces and uh, Shakirir uh, Memedarov with the black pieces. I think this is probably the uh, the worst game as far as uh, the blunder uh, because, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the worst loss of today because Nipomniachtchi was basically one move from winning uh, the game here and then he wound up uh, actually losing uh, this game and this position right here that you see on the board um, uh, Mamadarov with the black pieces has just played the move uh, h6 All right this position stems from a Gioco piano just played the move h6 and here and Nipomniachtchi just has to play the move queen f2 with the threat of just simply going to uh, f8 with the rook. So, for example, rook, say let's give white another move. Rook f8, king h7, knight f6 check, king g7, and then knight e8 just picking up the queen. And that's it. This is unstoppable. There's no real uh, remedy to that idea. So queen f2, for example, let's say knight d7, right? Let's give black his moves back. Rook takes e5, queen takes e5, queen comes up to f7, threatening mate, of course, queen e5, and queen d7, just picking up the knight. And black is just lost here in this position. I right, just down a piece. Okay. And um, doesn't have enough checks to be able to create a perpetual uh, checking situation. All right, so just queen f2, um, getting on the open file, and uh, this should be an easy move to find for a great tactician like Nipam Niachi. However, he was tempted by another move that, of course, to the naked eye looks fantastic. Rook f6, right, you're attacking the queen and you're um, threatening to take the h6 pawn with check, right? So that's the move he chose. However, remember Dyarov struck back with queen d1 with the powerful threat of, of just bringing the rook here, okay? So for example, if rook takes h6 here, you have king g8, and then with the threat of rook c2, it's devastating. So all white can do at this point is go into an end game, which is bad for him. Queen takes b3, a takes b3, rook c2 check. 
for rook uh, b5. The reason why is because the majority on the queen side. So the last game we talked about the majority on the queen side, the powerful uh, creation of a passed pawn. And we talked about how the king side attack is always going to be more uh, dangerous or has to at least be respected more. And so here we see the opposite happening. So the last game we looked at, we saw the king side, the king side attack triumphing, triumphant over the queen side majority. And here we see the opposite. So what happened here is uh, Nepo's king side attack is no longer valid. So after rook f6, queen d1, now he has to go back on the defensive. Rook f2, <clears throat> queen d5, king h2. And all Mamadirov has to do here is just consolidate. Let me just grab that real quick. Sorry about that. Um, so again, we we were um, looking at this um, this situation right here, um, whereby the queen side majority is is now triumphing over this the white's king side attack. So now you can see uh, Memedar of pushing black, uh, pushing white back here. So after king h two, queen d six. Of course, you have discovered uh, attack against the queen threaten. Knight g3, and now white's pieces have been pushed back into passivity. Rook b5, queen c2, and now it's just a matter of time. King g2, knight d3, queen c3, queen e5, offering the queen trade. Right? That's um, that's bad for Nepo, so queen a3, and now c5 here. Pawn majority starts to march. Rook e2, king h7. Queen a4, queen e6, good move. What queen e6 does is protect the a pawn so that b5 can be played. Queen c2, b5, knight h5, rook d6. And all Mamadarov is doing is just making sure his position is rock solid because he knows he's going to win with that pawn majority. So the only thing... White can do is mate him or win material, so he's just making sure he kills all the counterplay. And this is what um, um, Dominguez should have done. Of course, he tried to do it and he unfortunately overlooked the situation, but and allowed rook h7. But that's what he had, that's what you have to do when you have these advantages on the queen side and your opponent is attack attacking on the king side. You have to make sure at all costs that. Your opponent uh, is not going to checkmate you or be able to win uh, material. Again, queen trade offered, queen b4. All right. And now there's no question about it. Nipomniachi is forced to trade queens. The rook is attacked on e1. The queen is also attacked. So what are you going to do? Queen takes b4, knight takes b4. And now it's definitely over. Rook f1. And. In this game, we see the triumph of the queen side attack. CT, uh, C2, E6, and then just rook takes E6. And uh, Napalm Niachi resigned. So, a lot of, lot of exciting chess this tournament. I don't know if there's something in the water. But these players are coming out fighting. Um, unfortunate blunders being made also. But again, it's all good. Uh, all good for the fans uh, and it's always nice when we can see a decisive results and not just draws so once again I hope you enjoyed that video please get in the comment section below please hit the thumbs up button to help promote my videos on YouTube and also again remember that I'm on those uh, other platforms Lee Chess Chess.com Twitter Instagram and uh, Pinterest Please get in the links below. Also, there's some more material, DVDs, books down there. And also, consider supporting my channel via the donation. I'll see you guys for the next round.